Hi, Simon Smale, gastroenterologist. Um, I thought following feedback from my previous IBS Causes video, I should uh, repeat it, uh, this time hopefully with better sound. So I hope this m fits the bill. I'm going to start uh, by explaining how the brain and the gut communicate with each other in normal conditions. And because I think that's very important in understanding the things that contribute to irritable bowel syndrome. I think um, then I will move on to explain where things can go wrong and sometimes how those things can interact with each other. Um, and I hope that will lead to giving people a better understanding of, of uh, the genesis of irritable bowel syndrome. I'm going to uh, start by uh, using some diagrams so uh, I'll move to those just now. So as you will see I've drawn a picture of the brain and the spinal cord and the gut and on the picture of the gut uh, I've drawn some other things. So uh, the gut really from the gullet right down to the anal verge is covered with a fantastic meshwork of nerve fibres. Essentially the gut has its own nervous system. There are more nerves in the gut than there are in the brain. Um, and from an evolutionary perspective, um, that's uh, important because uh, it's evolved pretty early on in evolution in, in animal terms because at an early stage, animals needed to eat and they needed not to be worried about what was happening in their guts whilst they were busy getting around their day-to-day -day business of whatever they were doing, making a home, finding a mate, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so your guts, in a way, are designed with their own nervous system so that they can get on and do the process of digestion and absorbing the nutrition that you eat. So, um, this amazing nervous system works of its own accord. However, if you get a bit of distension in your gut, perhaps a bit of green debris you've eaten, um, you'll get a message going from the gut, occasionally, to the spinal cord. And for the most part, that's relayed as a reflex straight back to the gut to say, just, just get on with the process of digestion. Your brain's not aware of it. It just happens. Um, however, if you eat more than you should um, or your your every Sunday lunch or whatever, you might get lots of messages going from your gut, from several parts of your gut to the spinal cord. And those messages go through a gateway in the spinal cord and they go up. To a bit of the brain that so I, I call messages from the gut it's actually called the anterior cingulate gyrus and there are a number of other associated areas within the brain that uh, tell you you've got stuff going on in your guts either pain distension bloating nausea or you need to open your bowels now there are a number of other areas that then f um, uh, feed back down into uh, the gut so i'm going to draw another part here i'm going to call this the messages to the gut center and clearly you won't be surprised to learn that that receives messages from the messages from the gut center if you like now there are other areas of the gut um, uh, sorry of the brain that also feed into that um, most of us recognize that stress and emotion has an influence on the way our guts behave so um, if you're um, in a stressful environment. Many of us complain of butterflies, some of us complain of diarrhea, some of us constipation, um, and that varies from individual to individual, but most of us recognize that that has an effect. So that has an effect on the, what goes to the gut. Similarly, um, uh, the way we were brought up around food. So um, if one uh, had, for example, um, a culture where one was eating insects a lot, uh, then uh, you'd probably think that was a pretty normal thing to do. But if you ask me to eat insects, I'm, I might feel that that's, well, I might feel a bit queasy, let's face it. But there's nothing nutritionally wrong with insects. That's just the way I've been brought up. And similarly, lots of other things have an influence on the way we feel around eating and the way we feel around food. Um, and then lastly, personality. So if one were to stereotype the personality uh, type to get irritable bowel, and, and it is very much stereotyping, then some interesting studies have been done which tend to show that people are 
have a propensity towards a personality type called adaptive coper, which is someone that tends to adapt and try and cope with everything that life throws at them. Um, so all of those three things, current events, how what's happened in the past, and our personality all plays into the messages to the gut. And that can have a huge influence on whether this gateway is open or shut. But of course we have some control over the guts as well directly in that you can decide whether or not you do or you don't want to open your bowels, uh, for example. So moving forward, how can that go wrong? Well, um, it can go wrong at a number of levels. If you get a gastroenteritis, for example, we know that you can get um, changes within the lining of the bowel, within the bowel wall, which um, lead to uh, you generating greater pressure waves, which is of course what helps you get your diarrhea, well, I assume that's what helps you get you rid of your bugs in terms of the diarrhea. And people get over that usually, people get over gastroenteritis and get better. However, um, some people, don't seem to get better and they get persistent symptoms of diarrhea and abdominal pain almost like persistent infection it feels like and of course that's because those changes persist um, and, and that's described as post-infective irritable bowel now uh, there are also uh, and that uh, that's as a result of the, the guts themselves the nerves in the guts themselves firing at a lower threshold now also uh, one can get a problem with the way in which the messages are processed at the dorsal horns here or in the ganglia actually before the dorsal horns and, and in that event rather than filtering those messages you're going to send all the messages up to the brain so the brain's becoming getting a lot more input than it than it's really used to so people become more aware of their guts some people send the messages apparently to the wrong part of the brain and to a part of the brain called the amygdala now if you send your messages to the amygdala that's where you send your really important messages and your brain isn't allowed to ignore messages that go to the amygdala so you're going to be much more aware of your guts than uh, you really should be if your messages go there so you can either get a dorsal horn problem or an amygdala problem or a problem with the gut firing at a lower threshold and of course again emotional context personality and um how we were brought up and the traumatic events that have happened to in the past to us in the past also have a big influence on the way our guts behave and so all of those things feed into the uh, opening and shutting of these gateways but also feed into the how we control our guts directly um, and interestingly when one gets for example, post-infective irritable bowel, if you actually look at the personality types, it still uh, tends to be people with adaptive co coping personalities that get uh, post-infective IBS. So this is not a one-hit phenomenon. This is a multifactorial collection of symptoms, really, which are used to describe, which are described in a term irritable bowel. But... Um, uh, describe, uh, um, if you like, an abnormality or multiple abnormalities of the way uh, this system goes wrong. Um, at the moment, we don't in standard practice have a fancy scan or some fancy blood test we can do to detect these abnormalities. I suspect if you come back in a few decades, we probably will. Thanks for your time. <laughs>